There's a look at all the graphite. It's from these guys. It's just all over my hands. I'm probably going to touch my face at some point and then I'll end up with like horrible graphite streaks all over them. It's going to happen. Stay tuned. <laughs> walking past a hideously expensive electromagnet sitting on the desk of your laboratory, what is the first thing that you think? Is it, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I upended the contents of my water bottle into that? Or, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I chucked a frog at it? If you're looking at the screen right now in utter confusion, then congratulations, you are clearly not Nobel Prize winning physicist Andre Geim. Alright, so I'm about to do something that's probably a little bit counterproductive for developing my audience, but what I want you guys to do is to click on the search button and type in the words levitating frog. Go on, off you go. I'll wait. Got plenty of time. Seriously, graphite just gets everywhere. It's brilliant, right? Seriously, that frog is like, help! I don't know what I'm doing! Why am I levitating? <laughs> that is the work of the brilliant and truly unique physicist Andre Geim. He looks at science as an adventure. Over the course of his career, he's worked ridiculously hard to steer away from what he calls zombie science. You know, the sort that most of us do when we get into our laboratory and it's kind of just pipetting stuff over and over and over and over again. Oh, Geim engineers serendipity. He's made a career out of it. First of all, he levitated a frog. He was testing out magnetic levitation and basically felt that it was a lot stronger than everybody thought it was. And so he decided to pour the contents of his water bottle into it and he ended up levitating a bunch of droplets. Geim and his colleagues proved that electromagnetic fields were actually a lot stronger than we originally thought. And he ended up winning what's called an Ig Nobel Prize. Ig Nobel Prizes are awarded to people whose work initially makes you laugh, but then makes you think. I would actually highly recommend spending an afternoon just looking at past winners because they're just brilliant, so fun, it's great. Fast forward a couple of years and Andre Geim and his PhD student Konstantin Novoselov were working on semiconductors. Geim has made it a little bit of a habit of his to jump around between disciplines. The theory is that somebody coming at a problem with absolutely no prior knowledge can probably think of different ways to solve it. Geim and Novoselov are working on a compound called graphite. Graphite is entirely made up of carbon and it's made up of carbon arranged in a particular way so that it has leftover electrons. Electrons are really important for conducting electricity. Electrons have a negative charge and so if you set up a positive and negative charge at either end of the material, theoretically those electrons should travel straight towards the positive charge and you get a current. Guy and Novoselov are working on a way to make graphite a transistor, an on-off switch in a computer essentially. The unfortunate thing about graphite is that there's no real direction for those electrons to go. They tend to go up, down, side to side, there's not really any way to control them. They were tearing their hair out, a previous PhD student had spent a whole bunch of money and time grinding a piece of graphite into dust and so they were starting on a new bit. They were about to give up until they heard about a technique that was commonly used by microscopists. What these scientists would do was get a piece of scotch tape, of sticky tape, and then they would clean the mineral by sticking it to the piece of graphite and then tearing it away, and then sticking it to the graphite and then tearing it away, and then sticking it to the graphite and then tearing it away. And what they ended up with was a really smooth surface. And that was really great for what the microscopists wanted to do because they wanted a smooth surface to mount things on top of so they could see them under these massive electron microscopes. Guy Novoselov heard about this technique and thought, hmm maybe we can use that. And so they tried it. They tried cleaning the graphite and then they started playing. They started playing with the scotch tape. They would take a section off the piece of graphite and then they would fold that piece of scotch tape in half and rip it open and then fold it in half again and then rip it open and then fold it in half again and rip it open. And they would keep doing this until they ended up with a single layer of graphite. Graphene is a single layer of carbon atoms. It is the world's only truly two-dimensional material. When they realized they'd made this, they were really excited. What they didn't realize is that that graphene turns out to be one of the strongest materials ever to have been created. You somehow managed to train an elephant to stand on top of a pencil with the point balancing into a piece of graphene, it wouldn't break. Not only is graphene ridiculously strong, it is also one of the best conductors of electricity ever known to have existed. And that's because the electrons, as opposed to graphite where they go in every single direction, the electrons can only go 
in one plane. The discovery of graphene is set to revolutionise the way we build everything, the way we interact with our world. From cars to smartphones you can fold in half and slip into your pocket. But the question is, was its discovery actually serendipitous? And I'm actually not sure. You see, Skyme seems to deliberately set out to engineer situations where he has accidental discoveries. But is that serendipity? Is that serendipitous in the same way that a lot of my other previous episodes have been? Skyme said once in an interview that changing disciplines is crazy. You have to learn an entirely new language, you have to learn a new psychology, you have to learn a new way of doing things. And that makes a scientist who does that unique. It gives them a different perspective, it gives them a different outlook on things. It makes them question things that people in that discipline have taken for granted. And maybe that's how science should work. And maybe we should go around engineering serendipitous situations. I don't know. Let me know what you think, especially since this is the end of my first series of Science Historical. Thank you so much for watching. It's been really fun. And I hope that I've been able to share with you some really cool stories that you might not have heard before. Remember guys, you can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter, and you can ask me any questions and make suggestions for the next season. Thank you so much for sticking around, and I hope to see you later. Bye. This is graphene, take one. I forgot to set that up. <laughs> graphene, take zero. <laughs> well, that elephant is clearly around the wrong way. Oh man. Okay, let's try that one again. Now attempt to draw a light bulb. This is gonna go great, because I'm at a really odd angle. That is legitimately terrible, isn't it? Uh, and I don't have yellow. Oh, my hexacons are getting worse. <laughs> I'm a scientist. I'm not an artist. <laughs> it's so getting bigger. Oh dear. This is a disaster.